We already saw this interesting report and introduction about our distinguished guest for today. For delighted to have with us Mr. Khalifa Lamtir. He's a clinical psychologist. Hello and welcome to our show. Thank you. Thank you for having me today and giving me the platform to spread a substance abuse awareness. This is what we need to do and this is what how we're doing it. So thank you for that. You are most welcome and thanks to you actually, Mr. Mm -hmm. Khalifa. Thank you, I appreciate it. So first of all, we know psychologists, psychologists actually and so uh, and sociologists actually and mm. educators, they are all working uh, to combat and fight uh, the drugs, especially we, uh, we know that the drugs really spread all around the Arab countries, especially here in the Gulf. So what actually are uh, the factors of spreading the drugs uh, in our Arab countries? Um, it's, it's, it's a multitude of factors, a collection of factors. Some of the more well-known factors that we're familiar with, um, economic, social, and environmental, yes. those we know. However, there's a set of factors that are lesser known to us, and we don't pay enough attention to them, such as mental health disorders, um, personality disorders, and mood disorders. Mm -hmm. uh, some personalities are much more prone to addiction uh, because impulsivity is a trait, such as borderline personality disorder, antisocial personality disorder. Um, you could have also OCD, ADHD, hypomania, mm. mania, anxiety, depression. All of these mm. disorders mm. allow a person to be much more susceptible mm. to addiction. Mm. Mm. However, with that being said, um, to say that one factor is the mm. primary cause, that's mm. incorrect. It's mm. a collection of factors. Mm -hmm. True, some personality types are much more prone to it, mm -hmm. but these factors are what ultimately push the individual into addiction. They attack from all sides. Mm -hmm. So this is like the, the, the main factors, but because we are eager to know about the most permanent factors, you mentioned too many factors, ADHD, it's like a collection of factors, disorders. and the result, it's like they see already the, how they are overcoming, mm -hmm. and you are doing a very noble job just mm -hmm. to rehabilitate these people. You will go from your, from your home, you go there, you just rehabilitate, just teach, just consider everything will be okay, then you leave with a smile. So that's mm -hmm. why we we'll like to greet you. Thank and you. today you are here just to show us the factors happening for this kind of addict people. Mm -hmm. So what about the most permanent, uh, we call it factors for the addiction? Um, as I said, it's, it's, it's a collection of factors. But however, one of the most mm -hmm. common factors that I see in our hospital mm -hmm. is that the lack of education and awareness. Mm -hmm. And as kids and sometimes mm -hmm. as adults, we have this intrinsic urge okay. to conform. Mm -hmm. um, because I want to conform, I'll do what my friends are doing in order mm -hmm. to get them to like me, mm -hmm. and in order for them to include me in my group. So to be, become like a big group. So exactly, this is the exactly. Thing. We always have this intrinsic urge to mm -hmm. conform at work, mm -hmm. at school, wherever. Mm -hmm. um, and because the lack of education on uh, substance abuse mm -hmm. and the consequences of it in, in the long run, mm -hmm. these individuals, they take the substance without knowing the consequences, mm -hmm. and they, before they know it, they fall into addiction. Mm -hmm. um, they don't know that there's withdrawal symptoms, they don't know that it could lead to eventually substance-induced psychosis that's deadly. Mm -hmm. They don't know it, they just, for fun, to conform. Mm -hmm. Before they know it, as I said, they fall into addiction. So they fall into addictions like they make more fun. It's like we call it a fake fun. So this is the result, and he's the one who's responsible for the, with the team just to we call, get over the addiction. Exactly, as you said, the fake fun, as my colleague Aziz mm. said. So there is no doubt that dealing with the drug addict is very sensitive due to the health and the social condition related to addict. But the, soci the society's view of the addict remains harsh even after... Um, his treatment actually from mm. the addiction. So what is the impact of the society negative view on the psychic and the addict uh, and also the family? Mm. Um, first of all, to refer, refer to an individual who is in, in, in a program trying to better themselves, making an mm. effort and suffering every day with the craving that they have, but taking the steps to better themselves as an addict, that's quite maladaptive. And that's one of the ways that society is harsh on that individual is the mm. language that they still <coughs> use to um, deal with that person, the way that they view them, the way that they treat them, despite that individual taking those hard steps mm -hmm. to better themselves, they are still regarded as an addict who's still abusing drugs. How does that affect them? Um, think of it from this way. When, in a, when a, that individual is sitting on mm -hmm. their own contemplating life, here I am in a program trying to better mm -hmm. myself and mm -hmm. society is still treating me the same. So what's the point of me being a program? Mm -hmm. In a program or without a program, they're still going to treat me the same. Mm -hmm. So and th that eventually leads to a relapse. Um, another point that I'd like to touch on that was included in yeah, the question, sure, sure. Yeah, um, treatment is completed. In addiction, treatment is never completed. 
Um, it's an ongoing process for the rest of their lives because the craving will always be there with them. It will always mm. be there. And addiction treatment is how you deal with that craving, lower the intensity to a point where it doesn't inhibit your ability to function in everyday life. That's a very good point. Like uh, there is no ending after exactly. the after you leave the the rehabilitation or the hospitals. Exactly. But it depends also on us. We are the families. We are already individuals, society, places, entities. We are responsible just to we call it contain them. Mm. How can we contain the people who already drug addicted before to be like a normal human being mm. and they avoid the COVID? Uh, more education more awareness programs, and mm. most importantly, more outreach programs. Okay. Um, to quit yeah. or not to quit, that's up to the addict. Yeah. You cannot force them to quit. Mm -hmm. Just like how it was their decision to get into it in the first mm -hmm. place, it has to be their decision to quit. Mm. Um, so provide them with the information that will help them decide to quit. That's all you can do. Mm -hmm. See, he do it like him by force. It's on them, but we have to help them. That's exactly. Important. Provide them with mm -hmm. the information. Nice. Exactly. That's all we can do. Exactly. So what about uh, the programs that offer to the youth? Because they're one of the most sensitive, actually, uh, you know, category in our society. Mm -hmm. And we know a lot of youth and teenagers, they are start uh, using uh, drugs, uh, mm -hmm. as uh, as my colleague said, like a fake, uh, you know, mm -hmm. having fun for uh, like a little bit of moment. So how actually can we stop them from doing that? What is uh, the society are doing for them? Mm -hmm. Um, as I said, more programs, most importantly, more outreach programs. And uh, that's one of the things, services that the addiction hospital provides, more outreach programs. Um, a few weeks ago, um, we had a booth in a very popular avenues mall. Yes. Um, it might seem simple, just having a booth. However, you never know. With the Ministry of Interior, right? Um, I believe so. Yeah, yep, yeah. I believe mm. so. Um, however, um, it might seem simple, that booth, but you never know. That person that's walking past you, that might seem fine from the outside, they could be suffering from addiction, mm -hmm. and that booth could be a beacon of light for them. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the ways. Um, also, we also fa offer family therapy in the hospitals. Mm -hmm. um, that's very important because we don't just focus on the patient, but also the family. Tackle it from both sides. Um, and that's some of the services that we provide in the hospital, and we have provided many more as well. Nice. And I have something else. We speak. We spoke in the beginning of the interview about the factors for the drug addiction. Mm -hmm. What about the symptoms? Because I know you will go to the hospital, the rehabilitation places, and you already face the cases. Mm. What about the symptoms? Um, when you're referring to symptoms, what are you referring to specifically? Is it withdrawal symptoms? Yes. Uh, withdrawal symptoms. Uh, withdrawal symptoms usually happens when a person quits the, the substance mm -hmm. that they've been using for so long because mm -hmm. their, their body is used to it. It's mm -hmm. used to always being on the substance. Mm -hmm. It's used to it uh, being on the substance mm -hmm. to sleep, mm -hmm. uh, being on the substance to eat, mm -hmm. being on the substance to go to the bathroom. So when they quit, they'll start to, they'll have difficulty eating, difficulty sleeping, mm -hmm. cold sweats, um, throwing up. Those are withdrawal symptoms. Um, however, sometimes mm -hmm. uh, when a person has a long history with substance mm -hmm. abuse, um, yes. You'll start to get substance-induced psychosis, mm -hmm. and that's part of the withdrawal symptoms where you start to hallucinate, start to hear things that aren't there, mm -hmm. start to get paranoid. Mm -hmm. That sometimes happens with um, substances such as meth or mm -hmm. shovel, as mm -hmm. it's commonly referred mm -hmm. to here in Kuwait. So exactly. this is like this, the, because the symptoms, how they are doing all the day, like they do something like before eating, before sleeping. Yes. Mm -hmm. Addiction. Mm -hmm. Addiction. So speaking about the scourge of uh, addiction, actually, mm. uh, we know a lot of young people experience uh, the addiction mm. and the drugs. So we would like to give them uh, like a smile of hope mm. from you. Mm. Um, first of all, um, if, if anyone that's watching that's suffering from addiction, my message to them is that um, you need to take that first step to quit or not to quit. That's your decision. Nothing will change unless you take that first step. Yes. Um, yes, it's going to be difficult the first couple of weeks. You're going to suffer from withdrawal symptoms, as we spoke about. Um, however, once you pass that, you'll start to learn how to deal with the craving that you'll have. Start to lower the intensity, as we said. Um, it's a long road. It's a long and bumpy road yes. full of challenges. However, it's doable. You can achieve it. Proof of that is the many patients that we have in the halfway house program at the hospital and the continuous care unit. Amazing. Uh, Mr. Khalifa Al-Mtayri, thank you so much for the thank great you. informations. For sure, we'll be again in our show. We'll talk more about the most important factor. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Big thanks and appreciation to our dear guest, Mr. Khalifa Al-Mtayri. He's a clinical psychologist. So, Aziz, 
actually we we actually we reach not we reach actually we have a little break dear viewers let's have it and then we move on <laughs> 